Hey everybody, so as we know, they released the body cam footage from the um, mass shooting in Louisville, and I will be showing the press conference. Please note that some things may be distressing to some viewers. I have watched the body cam footage in advance, and there is nothing graphic shown. However, again, Please be advised, this may be distressing. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here on uh, short notice. My name is Sergeant Matt Sanders. I'm the commander of the Louisville Metro Police Department's PIO's office. I'm going to give you just a quick chronological order on how today's events will unfold. In just a minute, I'm going to turn it over to the chief of police. She'll offer her opening remarks, and then she will then turn it over to Deputy Chief Paul Humphrey, who will then play video that we have prepared for you all today. Um, Deputy Chief Humphrey will do a play-by-play -play as the video unfolds. The video itself is about nine minutes in length. Uh, after that, we'll take three questions and then we'll conclude the presser. Immediately following the press conference, I will upload the videos to all of our social media platforms. Now, Chief. Good afternoon to the mayor, elected officials here today, to the media and to the citizens of Louisville. April 10th, 2023 will be forever etched in our memory, but this is truly a time for unity, healing and compassion. Our freedom to live in safety and conduct business with peace of mind was challenged on yesterday. But be assured, it is a challenge that the men and women of LMPD are prepared to face and conquer, just as was demonstrated by the heroic actions of our first responders to the old National Bank. These officers unflinchingly answered the call to protect and their duty to serve. They confronted acts of violence head on and neutralized the threat. Tragically, lives were lost, but countless lives were saved. Deputy Chief Paul Humphrey will show the body cam footage and he will walk us through the details as necessary. And again, we will answer three questions upon his conclusion of his presentation. Thank you. So they will now walk through the body cam footage. I have sped up a little bit um, for time's sake. So if you should need to, you can always slow down the footage. Okay, thank you. Again, as Sergeant Sanders said, after the conclusion of this press conference, all videos as well as the officer's information will be posted to our social media platforms for everyone to be able to access. So on Monday, April 10th, 2023, Louisville Metro Police responded to 333 East Main Street at the Old National Bank on the report of an active shooter. I'll show you the overhead and we will, we will walk through this entire situation. I will explain prior to each video what you're about to see so that you have an understanding of how events unfolded. At 333 East Main, you can see that's the uh, building there, right next to Louisville Slugger Field. Main Street runs east and west, while Crescent Street runs north and south. This is a street level view of the building that we responded to. Officers from it's the a huge bank. As, as well as officers from the surrounding unit. What you'll see uh, shortly is the response from Officer Will and Officer Galloway's car. They will be coming up Crescent Street. Crescent Street runs to your right on the video. They will be coming from the river down towards uh, Main Street. They will park across. And one thing I want to mention that's amazing is that only two officers initially responded. And the fact that they were able to, to take down this shooter was incredible. And I can't imagine myself ever getting into a situation like this and they did what they had to do and like the chief said it's fortunate that many lives were lost at the same time they saved numerous lives where that white van is um, they will get shot at, at that location and then back up and uh, and, uh expert vehicles at that point I want you guys to understand how we talk about how we train and prepare for active shooter situations. It's easy to tell an officer that you have to run towards gunfire. It's another thing for them to actually do. Anybody who's ever been shot at can tell you it is not, not fun. And it doesn't matter how many times you get shot at, it doesn't be easier. Um, plain and simple, everybody reacts in different ways to gunfire. We have to train our officers and, and put it into them, into their character, that their job is to go towards that danger in order to protect others. Our decision-making model that we use 
starts with our safety priorities. Our safety priorities are grounded in our ethics that all life is sacred and decisions have to be based on who is in the most imminent danger right now and who has control of the situation, who can remove themselves from the situation. So when we prior prioritize how we make our responses, they are based on, do we have hostages or victims? Obviously in an active shooter situation, we already have victims who have been injured, who are, who are currently at risk of dying as well as uh, other potential uh, victims who cannot remove themselves from that situation. Do we have other bystanders and civilians in the area who aren't the direct targets of that violence, but still need to be protected? Officers come next in protecting ourselves in order to de-escalate the situation because we have a duty to respond and we have a duty to protect and we have the tools and the authority to protect others. Finally, the suspect. The suspect has the ultimate say in every situation. We pray and we hope that the suspect gives up and complies peacefully prior to our arrival. But if they don't, then the officers have to take the appropriate action to make sure that they protect lives as they go throughout these, these events. The mission of being the police is fundamentally to protect lives and protect constitutional rights. That is absolutely what these officers did today or yesterday. You will see officers Wilt video, Officer Wilt's video. Officer Wilt was a brand new officer. He had no experience. He was going based on two things, his training and his character. And you will see that he never hesitates. Even after getting shot at, this young man went back in to the line of fire in order to protect others. And you're gonna see that and how he made his decisions and how they ultimately uh, protected other people's lives. Wow, so he was a rookie, so to speak. And to have this be one of your first responses and to respond in the way that he did is admirable, honorable. He saved lives that day. Here's a quick chronology of events of uh, the initial response by officers. 838, officers are initially dispatched and they were off on scene about 841. You will see when uh, we show the video from Officer Wilt, they are immediately shot or are still inside the car and his shots are fired in their direction. They do not know exactly where these shots are coming from exactly, uh, but you'll see that uh, they're coming from the front lobby area of the building. At 842, they redeployed, exited their vehicles and began to uh, ascend the stairs going into the lobby area of the building, uh, at which time Officer Wilt was struck. Officers then uh, continue forward uh, in order to make an entry and respond to the, the shots. Also, rescue officer Wilt, and I'll describe those events as they happen. Next, what you're going to see is, uh, I'll give a disclaimer here. There is some, some graphic images, but all of the, the really graphic images have been blurred out. Uh, but we are trying to give you an accurate portrayal of the event as they happen. So it is hard to hear um, because when they move the projector, the audio is much lower so this is a timeline of the incident so officer initially dispatched at 8 38 a.m at 8 41 they arrive on the scene they hear shots as they they arrive at 8 41 subject fires on officers a minute later 8 42 the subject again fires on officers at 8.44, two minutes later, subject fires again at officers, and at this point, officers return fire. One minute later, officers make entry, confirming subject down. So in seven minutes, they were able to take the subject down and end the threat to other lives. I will also say while I was watching this, it it feels like it's more than seven minutes. However, it's amazing that it, it was only, I mean, I say only, but seven minutes is a, a great response time. Oh, and one other thing, there are some distressing images. However, the any images that would be highly graphic have been blurred and will not be shown. This is simply the encounter between the officer and the suspect. This is a still image of the suspect inside the hallway prior to the event. Okay, so again, if it's hard to hear 
This is the subject in the hallway prior to the event. This is still image of post shooting of the active shooter victims, where he then went to a front lobby and set up an ambush and waited for officers to respond. This is again a still image of the subject as he was waiting for officers to arrive. He had already um, injured his victims and he was waiting for responding officers to ambush them. He remained in that front lobby where he shot at another couple of people who passed by and then he waited and waited, he lied and waited for officers to respond. And as soon as he saw them, he did he shot them. That's where he, he shot officer uh, Will. Uh, officers cannot see inside this area. It is darker inside than it is outside, and this subject is looking from a higher vantage point out onto them where they cannot see inside what, what they are approaching. And so the subject was able to see officers arriving. However, because of the level that police officers were at, they were not able to see the subject. So they were at a, a disadvantage going into this situation. We now see Officer Wilt's video. Officer Wilt is uh, train in, in training, and he is the one driving the vehicle of his training officer, Officer Gallagher. You'll see them approach on Preston and will park uh, and immediately back up as they, as they get shot at. And then re so Officer Wilt is the officer in training. He was driving the patrol car and he was on patrol with his training officer. And as they approach, they hear gunfire. So then they, they back up their police vehicle. So as you saw there, after they received the shots and they re-approached, Officer Wilt got on the radio and started communicating that they had already been shot at. Shot at while remaining calm and collected and getting out the proper information. Next, you'll see Officer Galloway's video. Officer Galloway was uh, Officer Wilt's training officer who was riding in the passenger seat. Uh, he deploys with his patrol rifle that he re retrieves from. And moves towards the shots of the fire coming out of the uh, lobby area of, of the uh, location. What you will see is a continuation all the way through this event at this point. So also will, will be shot. You will not. You will not see that part on the video. Uh, as also will is just a step uh, behind uh, Officer Galloway. Officer Galloway will then move across the, the lobby area uh, outside where he is shot, and he will fall down and, re and roll and return to cover on the opposite side, on the main street side. He will take cover there behind a large planter box and try to assess the situation and use the situational awareness of both his status as well as the status of the downed officer and try to ascertain where the shots are exactly coming. He receives a minor gunshot wound, but he continues to stay in the fight and try to assess exactly where this, this, this uh, shooter is. While he's doing that, he is going back and forth. He is also communicating on the radio, trying to get a good view of the shooter. You will not hear a radio transmission from him because he has an earpiece. You will later hear the transmission. So what's being said is Officer Galloway, again, is the training officer. And as they approach, the other officer had been shot and was down. Um, Officer Galloway was also shot. However, he continued to assess the situation, was in contact with radio control, and was looking to take down the subject. Radio that picks up on the officer that walks up behind him. As 
officer Wilt is there and other officers begin to arrive, they attempt to go up the steps to rescue the officer Wilt. As they go up the stairs and attempt to rescue officer Wilt, the suspect fires at them trying to kill them in their process of coming to save. At this point, off other officers arrive. They attempt to bring officer who is injured to safety. However, they begin also receiving gun gunfire and they um I'm trying to think of how he said it. Um they make a plan um to get him out safely. When the suspect does this, he breaks out the glass and shoots again through the glass, breaking it out, where Officer Galloway can finally get uh, the At this point, because of the subject shooting, he begins shooting through the glass, causing it to eventually shatter. And at this point, Officer Galloway is able to get a direct shot subduing the subject. Point to see where this threat is coming from. Once he is able to see the threat, he then engages the threat, shoots, and kills the subject. You will not be able to see that on the camera just because of the vantage point of this camera that's on his chest versus his eye. And the actual um, taking down of the subject will not be seen because of the vantage point. So again, there are some distressing images. However, nothing graphic will be shown. Level, which is a little bit higher on the steps, as well as the distance. This is not a close range shot from Officer Galloway. After, uh, after the suspect is down, they will then approach the, su the suspect while other officers are rescuing Officer Wilt. Uh, that is off camera, you won't, you won't be able to see that. You will see that the suspect is down with a rifle next to him. That is blurred out uh, because of rank danger right now. Okay, so at that point is where the first officer who approaches is injured. He, as you can see, falls back down the stairs and um, the second officer begins to assess the best way to further respond. And remember, this was a total of seven minutes between where they they arrived and at the point they subdue the, the subject and enter the building. You can hear the other responders in the background.
And at this point, it has been six minutes. And we can see in the background other officers arriving. So again, the subject hears police arrive and begins firing his weapon again. that you might have heard there uh one was is that blue talking they were they were talking about is that are those other officers that are talking uh versus uh civilians uh he also said uh we need to we need to plate the officer so he's talking about being able to get some something between themselves and the shooter that will stop bullets to put some kind of hard plate in between them so they can affect that rescue that was the word that i was trying to think of that he had used is hard plate they were trying to put a hard plate between um the injured officer and the subject um I think you can you can see the tension in, in that video. Uh, you can understand the stress that those officers are going through. Um, response wasn't perfect, but it was exactly the response we needed. Um, I think I would I would love to have either one of those officers arrive with me any day. Um, they did absolutely exactly what they needed to do to save lives. Once officers arrived on scene, not another person was shot. Not a single person received any further injury once officers arrived on scene, and that's what we're here for. So. One uh, third perspective on this was a bystander video from across the street that was taken on uh, a man's cell phone. Uh, this will be from the, the south side of Main Street, just behind where uh, Officer Galloway ends up at the bottom of the stairs. There is no audio that goes along with this video. Okay, and I am going to skip this because it it shows um, just a different perspective of Officer Gallo's vantage point from afar. Okay, so we're going to start this up from here. So following uh, the approach to the suspect, also Will was, was rescued by officers and transported in the back of a police car to University of Louisville Hospital where he received treatment. Officers immediately, along with fire, EMS, and other agencies, entered that building and searched that entire building multiple times to make sure there were no more threats. And they did that. They also took medical supplies in and began immediately treating and triaging and transporting victims of that shooting. Uh, from our conversations with medical staff, it is 100% certainty that officers' medical treatment saved lives that day. The actions that they took to follow up after being shot at themselves, to be compassionate and provide medical treatment, absolutely saved lives that day. Uh, there's a, there's going to be a million stories that'll come out of this, um, but as they keep rolling in, one of them that happened that we just learned about a few minutes ago was um, EMS was treating victims and they were they were short staffed and they needed, they needed people to be in the back of the EMS wagon with them. And a lieutenant from Metro Police got in and drove the EMS wagon so that the EMS workers could treat uh, one of the victims on the way to the hospital. That's, that's what we do, right? We improvise, we make sure that we do everything that we can to keep people safe and take care of them. Uh, what you saw in that video was absolutely amazing. It's it's tragic, but it's absolutely amazing. There's only a few people in this country that can do what they did. Not everybody can do that. I agree with him. I know I I don't believe I'd ever be able to do that. Um, if I was under duress, maybe. But again, these police officers and firefighters and EMS, every first responder is a hero because 
when we're trying to run from danger, they're running into danger. Uh, they, they deserve to be honored for what they did because it is not something that comes easily. It is not something that comes naturally. Anybody who gets shot at reacts. For people to react by staying there, staying in the fire and going back inside the scene, keeping themselves in danger, that's superhuman. Those men are amazing. The women that responded are amazing. The EMS workers, the firefighters. Uh, if you guys don't know, EMS and fire go inside that scene with us before we're able to say that it's safe. Sheriff's officers, off-duty officers, all came out and went inside that scene before we were able to guarantee that it was safe. And those actions absolutely saved people's lives. And we want to focus on those victims. We want to focus on those people that lost their lives, that were injured. We also want to recognize those heroic efforts that, that also saved lives. Um, as I said before, this, you know, this, this video will be posted in its, in its completion, um, along with the personnel files of the officers that will be available. Um, but I'd be remiss if I didn't say that, you know, the most heroic things at the peak of our career that we do are shrouded in other people's tragedies. As a I feel so, so bad for this officer. You can tell that he's nervous. He's becoming emotional as anyone would. And I, I give him grace for acknowledging all of the work that all of those first responders did on that day. A profession, we are here to save people. And even though we saved lives that day, there are people that lost theirs. We need to honor and respect them and, and make sure we pray for them and take their families under our wing and take care of them. And we also need to do the same for those officers because they're hurting as well. They're not just physically hurting. This hurts emotionally. So we need to make sure that we take care of them and we understand the sacrifice that they make every day. We'll turn it over to questions at this point. So I'm not going to make a comment about any communication that happened, but he was moving around inside the front lobby area. So there's a front foyer where the elevators and things like that are, as well as some offices. And he was moving pretty deep in the structure. So when you open up the front door, the front glass door, there's a space with a second secondary set of doorways and then doorways that go to offices on either side with elevators. And so he was moving in and out of that, that space. So he was pretty far back in there. So when I say that, he went to the front lobby after, after assaulting the victims uh, in the office area, and he could see out where no one could see in uh, because he's, uh, like I said, two, two sets of doors deep. Um, when you combine that with that non-reflective glass, the sunshine, uh, the elevated position, officers could not see inside those doors on their approach, uh, whereas he could see out to them. And so that's why he was able to fire on them before they ever saw where he was. It appears that way. And I apologize. I can't hear the questions being asked either. So it again, was an, uh, it was less than another three minutes. So it, it 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 feels like eternity to watch. You can only imagine how it felt for them being there in that moment. Um, uh, these types of events are a little weird from the standpoint of time compression and, and memory and those types of things. But they feel like they happen like that. They also feel like they take forever. So um, yes, uh, that was a that was a, a a tough three plus minutes to watch while they, they waited for officers to uh, to get there. Okay. So the question must have been, how long did they? they wait for other officers to arrive and it was about three minutes that the two initial officers um were there before others arrived and take care of business thank you just a quick um, a quick closing comment is just again to reiterate what the deputy chief and chief have said but a giant debt of gratitude is owed by our entire community to officer wilt Officer Galloway and all of the heroic men and women on LMPD and the other first responders that responded to this. We, we thank you for your service yesterday and we thank you for your service every day. As we move forward from here, uh, LMPD and our administration will continue to provide information about the investigation as it continues. We know there's still a lot of unanswered questions. 
You want answers, we want answers, the public wants answers, and we will continue to provide that information as it is available. We expect within the next 24 hours, we will be releasing um, various 911 um, calls and audio tape of that, and then the investigation will continue and as more information is available, we'll continue to make you aware of that. Thank you all very much. Okay, so that was the releasing of body cam footage. Um, and as um, they said, they will be releasing the 911 calls soon. So I am going to look at this story a little bit more in depth and I will be working on a video to go over what's what, what happened, what's known now and any updates I will post on my community tab. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you on the flip side.